In one sense, I'm doing nothing different. It's exactly the same. There is no Binoy Gospel and British Gospel. There's one Gospel, and that is that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. I'm Ruben, uh, 29. I'm a missionary and a church planter here in Santa Maria Bulacan, originally from the UK and living here in the Philippines for uh, 18 months. I'm Catherine Saywell. I'm also 29 and I'm a full-time mom and support to Ruben in the church planting. Ever since we've met, one of our first conversations was actually Tungkol sa Philippines. We always talked about the Philippines and... We prayed together about whether the Lord might open a door. We would never knew saan sa Pilipinas. And then, you know, we, we visited Bulacan. Then we came to Santa Maria. And then, yeah, God just opened doors for us here. Because there's my empty house here. And then, yeah, we just wanted to reach out to my family. When I became a teenager, I attended church mission trips here in the Philippines. And then I grew to have the love for serving and you know, sharing the gospel. I think the main thing was I wanted to reach out to my family. Very young then. Now actually living here, you realize that they have their own lives and um, it's a tricky situation trying to get them to come to church as well and to minister to them. When I look at the Great Commission in Matthew 28, I see uh, a call for church planting. I don't see it as just a call for evangelism, but to settle people into local churches where they will hear the gospel and be transformed by the gospel. Uh, we, we started off just witnessing to people on the street, sharing Jesus with relatives, and then it, it, it started a few uh, regular weekly Bible study groups in the area. Uh, we were meeting together in groups of house Bible studies, street Bible studies, and even a jail ministry as well. There's one guy who, who we met on the street uh, probably a month after we moved to the Philippines. He was the first non-Christian, non-relative that we met. And he was a coffee vendor, and uh, he became our weekly supplier of coffee. And, uh, and, and we, he invited us to come and take a Bible study with him. When I spoke to him a few months ago, I said, um, you know, what, what do you think about the gospel? What do you think of Christ? And his response was, I, I just, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. And I said, that's your problem. You, you, you're trying to, to do something to merit God's acceptance. What you've got to do is simply trust in Christ. And uh, met up with him just a couple of months ago, and he says, uh, I, I, I've discovered something. Uh, through your preaching, through my own Bible reading, through my own study, and uh, I'm trusting in Christ. And he has had a complete turn. Uh, he's completely transformed in not just his mind, but also his behavior. The Bible says, by your fruits you shall know them. There's fruit in this man's life. Sometimes we, when we think of evangelism, we think that it needs to be quick and it needs to be immediate, but actually the, the reality is that evangelism takes time. I think the biggest encouragement is you look at Christ and the way that he ministered. Uh, I mean, was he accepted by everyone he ever spoke to? Not at all. He was rejected, he was forsaken by people to the point that he was even crucified for the gospel that he shared. And so if Christ was rejected, be prepared for rejection, but also be encouraged that, that some will hear. You know, when we share the gospel, what we're doing is we're sowing the seed. We're throwing the seed and then we're watering our efforts with prayer and we're saying, God, you give the growth. We can't make dead people live. We can't make blind people see. There's nothing that we can do to convert people. But what we can do is we can pray. If you pray to God and ask God to help you, to just to be a witness to those people you see, like through your, the way you live, just share it. The worst that can happen is that they will, I don't want to talk to you, but your God has called you. He's got a purpose for you. Sinabi ni Jesus, ngayon ang araw ng kaligtasan. Life is short. 
Uh, we don't know how long we have in this world and eternity is long. This life is to be used for one thing, which is to seek God and to live for God.